Hello everyone, Dr. Alex Vasquez here with Antiviral Strategies for Coronavirus. Here I will continue deciphering and deconstructing the phenomena of viral infections, providing insights that lead to better treatments. Today is March 4th of 2020. Antiviral Strategies for the new, so-called new coronavirus 2019-2020 context. Here we are yet again, collectively acting like a bunch of scared idiots due to yet another international viral crisis the illness is real, but when it is strategically mismanaged and strategically misrepresented, then any small problem can become an excuse for crisis, panic, international turmoil, and the rewriting of laws that restrict access to privacy, free speech, free travel, access to work and education. We, collectively, are failing to access the knowledge accumulated for decades in nutrition and biomedical sciences. Fear is the chosen tactic for politics and profiteering. So let's calm down and look at readily available options for safely and effectively managing viral infections. I will limit today's conversation to six interventions that are readily available for clinical use, clinical trials, and which can be used as comparators in what we can expect will be upcoming drug and vaccine trials. For practicality in number one, the rapid production of this video, Number two, comprehension and utilization of this information. This video will be as short and practical as possible, perhaps a bit spontaneous and unpolished. Uh, I've discussed a lot of these concepts in other videos, which you can find on my website at inflammationmastery.com forward slash antiviral. In 2019, I provided a new overview of the overall antiviral strategies and antiviral nutrition, and also a separate video of nearly two hours specifically focusing on the nutrient N-acetylcysteine or acetylcysteine. Again, you can find both of those videos on my website, inflammationmastery.com forward slash antiviral. And I'm basically reviewing and kind of refreshing the information that I published in 2014 in a digital ebook titled Antiviral Nutrition, and also in a full color paper book called Antiviral Strategies and Immune Nutrition. In 2014, I published a small editorial or essay titled, The Proof is in the Panic, We Need a New Strategy Against Viral Infections. And I'm going to refresh and summarize some of that information here. The recent, recurrent, ongoing, repetitive, and predictable international health crises due to viral infections have made very clear the fact that the international community needs to use different strategies to combat viral infections. Since 2014, fear and panic regarding various viral infections, such as Ebola, measles, mumps, enterovirus, acute flaccid paralysis, and now the new novel Chinese coronavirus, has been widely publicized, inappropriately politicized and weaponized, and or per the concept of disaster capitalism used for private profiteering. The fact that these viral infection health crises exist in these modern times is prima facie evidence of the failure of current systems and the need not for new treatments within the same model, but for a new model better suited for international distribution, disease prevention, and broad spectrum effectiveness. The multifaceted model presented originally in my book in 2014, Antiviral Strategies and Immune Nutrition, again published as an ebook titled Antiviral Nutrition, gives us four main areas upon which we can safely, affordably, effectively, and rapidly focus our efforts. Number one, blocking viral acquisition by targeting the virus directly. Number two, blocking viral replication. Number three, supporting immune function. And number four, supporting cellular and whole body health. These interventions have proven effectiveness, low cost, international availability, without the costs, delays, limited availability, and adverse effects of current and forecasted medical treatments. Here I'll discuss very briefly some of the microbiology of the coronavirus family. These are enveloped RNA viruses and they contain the largest genome among RNA viruses. They undergo rapid mutation, especially where the soil and therefore the food and therefore the people and the animals are deficient in selenium. And this of course worsens the human animal intertransfer and mutations. Generally speaking, these viruses are mostly benign, causing 15 to 30 percent of the common cold or the sniffles, which is runny nose, slight fatigue, and sneezing. This is the typical upper respiratory nose and throat infection. And unlike with other infections such as measles, infection with coronavirus does not result 
in durable and reliable immunity. So what does that tell you about the anticipated efficacy of vaccines against coronavirus? If the full infection with a living virus does not result in durable immunity, I'd be surprised if the vaccines are able to surpass the effectiveness of a natural infection. All infections tend to be more severe in elderly persons, diabetics, persons with pre-existing heart, lung, and renal diseases, and in people who are immunosuppressed for whatever reason, especially including non-obvious nutritional deficiencies, especially of vitamin D, selenium, vitamin A, protein, and zinc. Periodically, these coronaviruses have mutated into forms that are more aggressive. We saw that with the SARS coronavirus in 2003, the MERS coronavirus in 2012, and now again with the so-called novel China coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, as it's now called, properly known as the Chinese coronavirus these days. This virus emerged on December 1st of 2019, the exact same day that China mandated a new vaccine schedule. 